seems like there's still a lot of confusion over this Clip Studio Paint licensing model. I'm going to give you all the numbers so you can make the best educated decision on if you're going to purchase the software and the cheapest route to get there. This is exactly how not to communicate to your customers how your new license model works. This freaking thing looks like a map to the Batcave or something, let alone a license model. So the first thing we're gonna go through is we're gonna go through new buyers, not upgrades, new buyers. We're gonna go through the regular price and the sale prices. Most of the times they run sales multiple times a year. That's really when you should buy in, but I'll cover both just in case. Um, so for new perpetual buyers, uh, 3.0, the regular price is gonna be $54. The sale price is gonna be $21.60. Uh, for the EX version, you're looking at $237. Um, $142 on sale. Here's the um, pros with the perpetual model. It's basically a one-time uh, purchase, but there are some gotchas that we'll talk about. You can keep your 1.x license. So for a lot of people who, you know, go back to the old Clip Studio days and you still have that license, if you buy the new one straight out, you're not upgrading that license. You get to keep those. That becomes important uh, later. I'll cover that. Uh, the cons are they have a check-in that's at least two weeks where you have to be online to continue to use the software. I'm not in favor of any of that. I think it's garbage. And there are no feature updates without the update pass. This is, again, a key thing that we're going to cover in detail. The update pass, which is sort of like you could think about it as like a battle pass for video games. It's basically like a, like a DLC model, seasonal pass, whatever you want to call it. What it does, is it allows in between perpetual version feature upgrades. Now, if that's confusing to you, there's a good reason for that because no one else does this. Usually, even if you're on an annual model, for example, if you buy, uh, I don't know, uh, Camtasia or something like that, and you buy the 2022 version, you get all the feature updates and um, updates for security and whatever else, performance and fixes and stuff like that in between the two versions. And then you own it for life. So as many updates as they put out for said 2022 version, you're going to get all of that stuff when 2023 comes out as it has in now 2024. Obviously, you're not getting any of those updates. They want you to buy again. It's an annual model. This is the entire purpose of the update pass, just to get those in between versions, those feature updates that came out after the original perpetual purchase. 12 month plan. This is straight up sub. Uh, you know, this is the only thing you have available on iPad, by the way. But some people, you know, will come into this fresh. So I just wanted to show the prices here across the board. For the pro version, the update pass is $10.99 per year. For the X version, it's going to be $31.99 per year. And then the straight up sub for one PC or one iPad is uh, $10.79. $10 sorry. And then the EX version is $45.99. So now we're going to deal with where I think a lot of the people are sort of in this um, purgatory of should I upgrade or not. So the pro version from 2.0 to 3.0 is going to be $22.99 regular, $16 on sale. And then the EX version is going to be $65.99 and then $46.19 on sale. Uh, the pros again one time is this is still dealing with one time purchase. And the cons are the same. Two-week online check-in, no feature updates without the update pass. So basically, you're just getting from, from whatever your version. They should call it an annual version because it would be less confusing. Imagine if you're going from 2022 to 2023 and you're getting all of the features that they released in the prior year. This is what's tricky about this, along with anything that they're doing for that version. We'll go over this a little bit more in detail. I know it's confusing. Uh, for 1X owner, so those of us who stayed on Clip Studio since it was uh, Manga Studio 5 and then they changed the name and then we've been getting updates for years and years and years. We bought it once and now we're in this kind of weird place where we have to decide if we're going to upgrade or not. The tricky thing is the further back you go, they make you upgrade through the versions. So in other words, I can't go for one price from 1.x all the way to 3.0. We know that now where we didn't necessarily know that a year ago. The first upgrade from 1.x to 2.0 is going to cost you uh, $19.99 regular and $11.99 um, on sale. This, again, is the pro version. 
EX is going to cost you $56.99 uh, regular and $34.19 uh, when it's on sale. The next up, so then remember, that's part one. If you want to get the 3.0, this is what they make you do. The next thing you have to do, now you've gone from 1.x and now you're on 2.0. And you're going to have to pay again. So the pro version, you're going to have to pay $22.99 regular. You're going to pay $16 on sale. And then EX, you're going to go $65.99 regular, $46.19 on sale. Very confusing. Update pass. Same prices, but I'm going to now elaborate a little bit on how this works if you're on 1.x and you get the update pass it will keep giving you the feature updates through the new versions so basically you can have 2.0 and you can get the update pass and pay for that and it'll give you the incremental feature updates but it'll also keep going as long as you keep paying so there is a benefit depending on the way that you look at it and what you're willing to invest Sub plan is the same, 1079 for uh, Pro and 4599 for uh, EX. So let's look at some key pieces of information if you're uh, new to all this. Version two and higher only allows one install of Clip Studio Paint uh, per license. So if you're coming from 1.x, you used to get two. One license and you could load it on two devices. Once you upgrade, that's gone. They do have a thing where you can uh, switch between devices but it's a little hokey because they don't really explain how many times you can do it before it becomes a problem, but it's not at the same time. It's one or the other. So that is a, a reduction in terms of um, what you're getting at as a consumer. End of the year promotions to receive the next version from free do not apply to upgrades. It's new purchases only. So what do I mean? A lot of times with these kind of annual models, if you buy it towards the very end, like, uh, you know, right before they're about to release the new annual model, they'll run promotions where they say, hey, um, buy 3.0 now and get 4.0 when it comes out for free. Last year, we learned that they did do that uh, for new owners, but they didn't do that for people who were upgrading. So if you're holding out waiting to the end of the year thinking, you know, I'll get a two for one at the end of the year. If you're upgrading, th that's not going to happen. If you stop paying the update pass, we covered this a bit. It reverts your features to the last perpetual purchase. And I've got a graphic for you that I'm going to show you exactly how that works because that can be costly. This is something I put together to help understand the different pricing models. And uh, my video from last year, which raised hell on Reddit, and you can check that link down below, is one of the principal arguments I had against these submodels were basically that they introduced them to raise the price, right? So they get you in at a, you know, a, a low cost and then year after year, it's a dollar more or whatever. And we do see evidence of that one year in and they raised the update pass already. But there are other areas where it's less costly and I want it to be fair. So what you'll see in the left pane is basically your, your EX upgrades and your perpetual purchases. On the right column, you're gonna see the pro versions. The yellow line is deprecated because you can't buy 2.0 as a part of this video, but I wanted to have it there for context so that you could see the difference in pricing. So the first thing we'll point out, let's ignore the upgrades for now, but if you look at the outright purchase of EX 2.0, that we can see that they raised the price this year uh, when it's not on sale, but when it is on sale, it's actually lower than the 2.0 price that was last year. So that's, you know, for whatever it's worth. And then the outright purchase of the pro version, similar thing. The perpetual version straight up will cost more than it did last year if you were at 2.0. But they lowered the uh, price when it's on sale. So is what it is. Now, the data that I wanted to show you is a lot. what a lot of people are asking is if depending on what version I'm on, what's it gonna cost me to get to like this 3.0 now? So I compared the prices, both normal and on sale, to what they would cost if you just bought it straight outright. So in other words, I'm on 1.x, I've gotta buy 2.0, I've gotta buy um, 3.0 now, what would happen if I just bought it straight up and what the difference is? That's what you're seeing in this upgrade to 1.x to 3.x differential. Uh, it is, at this point in time, no doubt cheaper to upgrade, go the upgrade path through the versions to 3.0 when it's on sale. 
and you can see those uh, differences there between the totals up above 122.99 at the normal version and the difference is $114 so I mean that's substantial and then even on the sales side you're dealing with the savings of about $61.62 this is where it gets funny on the pro side it looks like when it's normal you're only really saving about $11 I don't even know if it's worth it to do at that point and I'll go into that in a second but on the sale side it's actually cheaper to just buy it outright it's like $6.39 cheaper to just go buy the the new version which is kind of strange I do have the sub models there for context for both uh, 3.0 and you can see both uh, on both ends we saw increases for the EX update pass we went from $28.99 to $31.99 as I predicted but I'm no clairvoyant this is what happens this is what they do it's a Netflix model just like I told you guys in my video last year uh, the pro update pass again only gets raised a dollar which may not be so big big of a deal but you know times x how many customers on a new sob model I, I think this is kind of aggressive and uh, uh actually kind of douchey to be honest with you so this is how this thing works with the feature upgrades okay and i went four versions obviously 4.0 is not uh out at this point but this is the way it's going to go so let's say you are uh around the 2.0 version okay now between 2.0 and 3.0 you get these feature updates 3.2.1 uh, 2.2, 2.3, whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? You have the update pass, so you get those features. If you keep the update pass, when they get to 3.0, you get those features as well, and it, you just keep going and keep going and keep going. Here's the gotcha. Unlike most DLC models or battle pass or whatever, generally, once you've paid them, you keep the updates. So in other words, if in my example, I got 2.1 and... 2.2 if i stop paying the update pass i keep those features and it's just i don't get anything new not these guys they don't do that at all what they do is if you keep going you pay uh what did i say it was about 10.99 on the pro version and you keep going to 4.0 and then i don't know life happens and you know uh eggs go to 21.99 a dozen or whatever happens uh you know and you say i can't do it you know i just i gotta stop paying they will roll you back all the way to the last perpetual purchase that you bought. So if you go year after year after year after year, you're not only going to lose any of last year's updates or whatever, you're going to lose all updates to that last perpetual model. And that's kind of crazy and kind of ridiculous, but that's what it is. So when you're weighing these options, you have to kind of play this game of the last time you bought the perpetual version versus just doing the update pass i wanted to be more positive this time uh, instead of just laying waste to these guys like i did last year and these are some suggestions I, I have for celeste to make this just a little bit better for everybody first of all is remove the online check-in for perpetual purchases i mean initial activation is enough against piracy in most cases they make you log in through the app we just we don't need it remove the paywall for new features between uh, versions which is the update pass what i'm saying is if i buy 2.0 or 3.0 now that's out and they come out with feature releases which on average is about three times a year based on what we know from last year and a lot of times they're features i don't want let me keep them you know i paid your perpetual purchase price and all that other stuff let me get the three up, you know, feature updates a year. And then when the new version comes out, I'll decide if I want that just like normal people do it. If you pay for an update pass, a perpetual version is required. So you can't just, you know, like you can't just get the update pass if you have no license whatsoever. And that's the, the hence the lower cost. If the pass is dropped, the user should keep the features granted during in which they sub via that update pass. Uh, remove the requirement to buy multiple versions to get current. This is kind of wacky. I mean that they make you do that. So if I'm on 1.x or 2.0 and 4.0 comes out, just just give me one thing. Why why do I have to upgrade twice? I mean, you're getting your money. Like, I mean, at some point, it's just greed. Don't lock improvements to existing tools behind a paywall. So for me, I'm not into like the 3D models or any of that stuff. 
if you happen to be into it and, and you use them more than just, you know, putting them in to help you with a drawing, leave a comment below because I'm perplexed why they're putting so much development resources into, you know, basically the equivalent of Poser. What I'm saying here is the things that I was interested in is like liquefy on multiple levels or improve mesh tool and things like that. Don't call that a feature upgrade. That is a quality of life improvement. And maybe the tool should have been released when it was actually ready instead of, you know, half-assed. Allow two devices for perpetual purchases. I mean, why did you guys take that away? That is a, a reduction for the customer. And it's a lot of the discourse online in terms of what you guys are trying to do with the license model. Makes no sense. People can't be at two places at once. There's a way to track this kind of a thing. So I'm not even saying let them log in at the same time. I'm just saying either make it easier to switch or make them have one instance closed down. I'm fine with that, but reducing it down to one device just seems like pure corporate greed to me. Last but not least, start focusing on improvements to performance and simplifying this UI. This thing basically hasn't changed since like Manga Studio 4. It's the same thing on that hood. They've added some kind of GPU uh, support and hardware and etc. But you know, brushes and a lot of layers and especially large texture brushes are still slow and the performance is awful. Like start giving us some of that now that you're getting all this, um, you know, revenue from all these different submodels and such. So recommendations for you. If you already have a perpetual version, the update pass is going to be your lowest point of entry. If you own a 1.x license and the funds are available, it is probably better to keep your 1.x license instead of upgrading. What that'll allow you to do is somewhat mitigate the fact that you can't run two instances. So you could take your 1.x license, you could put it on that spare laptop, and then on your main device, you could have whatever it is you're paying for, whatever version. And if you're in an emergency, if you're in a jam, they haven't released any real updates that are like that life-changing where you can't work. You can do 97% of the things you used to be able to do. These are just feature updates. 1.x owners might be better off based on the pricing, holding out for 4.0 since the full price will probably outweigh any upgrade path if they even allow that. In other words, uh, what we saw even in the pro side is that it's just cheaper to buy it. So I would imagine if you're all the way back at 1.x, by the time we roll around again next March, it's probably going to be pretty close. To me, that point I made, just made about keeping the 1.x, that's worth having as opposed to uh, whatever uh, small discount you might get, if any, from upgrading. Feature updates seem to be about three times a year. To me, it doesn't seem worth it to buy the perpetual version and the update pass. Wait until the next version comes out with the features you want. Uh, the more updates you receive, the further from the last perpetual version you are, and the more expensive it'll be to true up. That's the graphic I just showed you. You can avoid this by just not doing the update pass. If you're a person you want to buy it once and you want to have that perpetual version, you're okay with those updates. The next year, you could always buy the next version if they release something that is like world changing for you. But at least this gets rid of the fact that uh, in the graphic, like if you're going version to version to version, you don't have to worry about how many versions do I have to go back now and pay, you know, to get back to where I was. Uh, hopefully I gave you all the information you need to make an informed decision Sell prices are always about the same. It doesn't matter when they run them. So you have all the data you need to decide if you're ready to jump in and which option is best for you. You guys could check out that video I did last year where I was basically laying waste to them, but I'll check you out in the next one.